to welcome you to Joe's memorial service. I want to say that you've been in my prayers, and um, as you go through this time also, uh, there's a lot of people here that have been praying for you guys. Um, this is a celebration of life. I uh, was just telling my daughter that whenever I passed away, I want a fiesta. 
Okay, I want to feel it like this. I want to feel like we are celebrating life. Joe, uh, Joe made a big impta, impact in my life. I'm sure he did on your life too, okay? But I'm, I'm going to show you guys how big of an impact he made, okay? Just, just so you kind of know. <laughs> this much. This is who he was. This is how much he loved people. Um, this was his gift. Um, I think uh, my daughters got their first walking stick when they were little. And she grabbed it. She's in the back over there. Um, she goes, man, was I this small? <laughs> um, but uh, this was Joe. So he deserves a service like this. I just want to say for those that are at home, welcome. I know there's some people from North Dakota that called this morning saying, is it going to be live? And I said, yes. So hope find, go find First Lutheran Church Vista, and you'll be with us. So I hope you're there with us. Um, if for some reason, always Facebook um, doesn't always go the way that we want, um, but such is life, right? Um, uh, if you just uh, hold on there, we'll put it back on either live or on uh, YouTube, which is First Lutheran Church uh, Vista on YouTube. So it'll be later on uploaded. So um, I'm going to grab, out of all this, I'm going to grab two sticks that I'm going to be sharing my message from, okay? Because there's too many to handle. So I'm going to grab this two. I'm going to concentrate on this two right here. This is my sermon right here. Please stand as you are able. Um, right after our service, we're going to have a little bit of a fellowship time that our church are, uh, have prepared for us to just stay around. Fellowship over on this side, bathroom over on this side. Um, there is portions of the service that you're going to see in the back um, that is darker than uh, the regular writing. That's your uh, response. So if you are a Lutheran, you know what I'm talking about, and if you're not a Lutheran, it's okay. Just read whatever is darker. I think it'll, it'll work, okay? So let us begin this memorial service. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Joe, to give thanks for his life, to command him, to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. All who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In his baptism, Joe was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, he shall be clothed with glory. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life. We glorify you. And we all say, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life. We praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope. We worship you. We worship you. To you, all blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together, shall we gather at the river. Shall we gather at the river where bright angel feet have trod with this crystal tank forever flowing by the flood of God? Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up the silver spray. Yeah. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Joe. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your abundantless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the, in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Psalm 23, one of the psalms that we read in services like this that we love, we love because it reminds us that God of love and mercy who care for us, especially during times like this. So I invite you to respond the darker portions of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even, Even though, though I, I walk through the valley of, of the shadows of death, death, I will fear no evil, for, for you, you are, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ecclesiastes 3, 1, 8. For everything there is a, re there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a, a time to heal, and a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to, to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Like I said at the beginning, he did make an impact, not only in my life, but in the life of this church. He loved everyone. Every time I went to visit, he would ask me, are you in need of a walking stick? And even though I say no every time, every time I went back, he had one ready. And I'm sure you got that as well. That was the way he showed God's love to people. That was his way to speak about the God that is uh, receiving him right now in God's presence. That is the God that we worship today and that we honor and we give thanks for his life. That is the God that eventually will bring us together. God created us all to be here right now. That was part of God's plan. 
And as he also took on that plan and that purpose in life and lived it out, we are also called to do the same thing. We are creator, created from dust, from nothing, to be who we are. God had a mind set already in who we were going to be and the gifts and the talents that we were going to have, just like he had. Just like he had. He was very unique. And like Ecclesiastes says, there is a time for everything. And there's a time for mourning. There's a time for joy. There's a time to die. We can't do anything about that. But to do one thing, which is what we are called, to live God's purpose on earth. He designed all of us. He designed him with the gifts and the talents and the way to love, the way that he did. That's to us. You know, that reminds me of this. What did I do with it? Oh, right here. I, uh, I went hiking with my daughters to a, can we put that slide of the rock? To a rock that is formed of an eagle. I don't know if you can see it. It's humongous. You've probably been there. It's huge. It's beautiful. And as we were walking, um, I found this stick right here. Can you skip it? I forgot. I don't have the skipper. So. I found that. And I picked it up. As you see the sand in that path, is rocky, loosey. It's kind of like a sandpaper. So I grabbed a s bunch of, and I started peeling this thing off. And my daughter's it's like, what are you doing, Dad? It's got the bark off and everything. And I said, I'm making an eagle, a walking stick in form of an eagle. And they were like, what? I'm like, yeah. So we walked and back. And then I grab it. Can you skip the other one, por favor? And I brought it to Joe. And I said, Joe, make an eagle. Skip. And he looked at it. He goes, no big deal. No big deal. I got it. And then, Pam, right there. Very special. He even uh, put a coin in here. Says, walk with God. Micah 6, 8. What is it that is required of us, right? but to walk humbly with the Lord. Put Pastor Ramon over on this side. is the coolest thing. So when I show it to my daughters, they went, whoa. Impressive. God had created us in that way. Way, way before he was here on this earth, God already had planned what he was going to be, who he was going to be, what he was going to be making. That's what the Bible says. That's the promise that we all have. That we're, we didn't just show up. The Bible says in Genesis, so God created mankind in his own image. In his own image. God created him. Very special, very unique. God knew what God was doing. And God knows what he's doing with us as we stay here. You, Sandy, probably wondering, what's next? As I picked this up, I knew right away the purpose of it. 
I knew what was going to be. God does the same thing. I don't think you're done yet fulfilling God's purpose. And God continues to fulfill that purpose in all of us. Isaiah 4, uh, 44, 2 says, I am your creator. You were in my care even before you were born. God knows us. And yes, there's a time for, for everything in this world, even to die. But as we are here, God is calling us to continue to trust and fulfilling that purpose. Psalm 139, it says, You know me inside out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. That's the word of God. Reminding us that as God did in his life, God continued to do the same thing. As we are here, we're called to be God's people, to be in the presence of God one day and to be all together. That's the promise. You know, I'm going to tell you something really cool. You see that cross behind me? Not that one, if you're looking up. That one over there. Who do you think made that cross? Mr. Joe. You know what it says right in the center? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So whoever believed in him would not die but have everlasting life. That's John 3.16. He made that. It was Christmas time. We were all done with it. I was eager to get that big old tree out of this church. 14 feet tall. I know. Humongous. It's like, okay. And on Sunday, I said, Joe, I got something for you. I walk him to the back as somebody said, Pastor, where do I put the tree? In the back over there. I took him over there. He looked at it. No big deal. He brought that back. I was very impressed. Beautiful. For God to love the world. We will remember this man. Every time I walk, I will remember this man. Every time I see that cross. Every time I read John 3.16. And that is the promise we all have in Jesus Christ. So, Joey, Sandy, as you mourn and as you say goodbye, just know that that promise reminds us that it's not the end of it. And that one day we'll be in the presence of God. And you know what? I'm jealous of him. I'm jealous. Because he is just relaxed up there in the presence of the Lord. Man. But again, we have a purpose. So don't ever feel like, what's next? There is something God will show you. God will continue to guide you. And yes, we're going to miss this kid, guy, sir. He was like a kid. Oh, my goodness. We're going to miss him. But you also will learn to live with those beautiful memories of him. And God, as we see, he made out of nothing this beautiful thing. God's still doing things with our lives. I hope you keep that in mind, that God's still doing great things with all of us. Let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this time as we gather as your people and that friends and families are gathered to remember Joe. And as we say goodbye today and as we know that there's a promise and that promise is that we will be in your presence as well one day. We'll join him up in heaven. 
But as we are here, we ask you to give us comfort, give us peace. Understanding that we're still not done. You're still doing things with our lives. Bless us as we walk, holding your hand through this life. We thank you for his life, and we pray always in your name, Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Now, I didn't tell you about this one. You went too fast. This was my next one. <laughs> Joey, there you go. Right. See what you can do. That's what I, that's what I thought. <laughs> Please stand as you're able. Let us sing together. How great that art. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hand had made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, your power drown, the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I see that God is full of staring, then if you die, I scarce can take it in. I'm going to invite Joey to come up and share a little bit about Joey's life. And if there is someone that would like to share, it's always welcome to, with the condition that we only speak about two to five minutes, because I know how long can it be when we talk about Joe. Thank you, Pastor. I just want to say, too, that that, that, that last hymn was my dad's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> he used to... Uh, you know, he was usually in church. He didn't, you know, sing too much. He was just under his breath. But when that...
chorus came in, he belted it out. You know, you could, the whole church could hear him. <laughs> a famous person once said, a goal, a love, and a dream give you total control over your body and your life. That person was a man born May 26, 1907 in Winterset, Iowa, by the name of Marion Morrison, better known to the public as the Duke or John Wayne. And I'm telling you this fact about John Wayne's birth because my dad would always mention this whenever he talked about him, so I think he'd want you to all know about it too. As many of you know, Joe was a dreamer and a great lover of life. But what were his dreams? What were the things that he loved that made him the person that he was? Well, I'll start with an obvious one. He loved to eat. He wasn't called Big Joe for nothing. He always told me, I'm not, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but he always told me that he was fired from his first job working concessions at the San Diego Zoo for eating too many peanuts. And I can remember sitting in this church as a boy and usually during the closing hymn, but sometimes, or sooner than that, usually not, you know, usually after the sermon, but sometime between the sermon and the closing hymn, he'd, he'd lean over to my, my brother Darren and I and he would loudly whisper, hey, where do you want to go for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then while at breakfast, he started thinking about what to do for lunch and for dinner, right? He's always thinking ahead. And this is the one that I was, always I got a kick. I know I got a, Andrew always got a kick out of this. His favorite food was the meal that was in front of him. So one week we'd be at, at Chin's, and he'd say, oh, Chinese is my favorite food. And then the next week we'd be at Mom's and Papa's Pizza Grotto down the road, and he'd say, you know what? Italian food's my favorite. And then the next week we'd be at the fish house, and he'd say, no, really, seafood is my favorite. I think if he, if he did have, actually have a favorite, it was lobster, so that's why I wore this lobster shirt, so he loved, loved lobster. Um, really, the, really, the only foods that he didn't like, you know, he, actually when I say didn't like, he hated, were bagels and yogurt. Everything else was golden. He had, he had kind of a vendetta against those two, but everything else, it was pretty much on, on, the, on the palate. He loved to wander. I always found it ironic that having grown up in San Diego during the, the early heydays of, of beach and surf culture, Joe's gaze instead was to the east, to the hills and to the mountains and the desert beyond. And he was a great lover of the Old West that, that showed through in his, a lot of his artwork, of the tales of outlaws and lawmen in the matinees that captured his imagination as a young boy. He always told me that he was born 100 years too late, that he'd rather have been born in 1837, the same year as another one of his idols, Wild Bill Hickok. Well, as soon as he was able, he set out over those hills with his brother Bill and a ragtag group of friends for work and for adventure. They'd work hard all week, get paid on Friday, and be broke by Sunday. Uncle Bill would uh, give us little snippets of their misadventures, always telling us that he's saving the really good parts for when we're a little older. Well, I never did get to hear those good parts, which is probably for the best. <laughs> but it was on one of those adventures up north to Oregon to work at a nuclear power plant where the best thing that ever happened to him occurred. At a bar outside Portland, he met his, a young school teacher, Sandra Goodmanson, herself on a journey out west from her home of North Dakota. They fell in love, got married, moved back to San Diego, and then to Vista where they raised me and my brother. Why, why Vista, you say, and of all the places? Well, my dad told me that he, had, he always had a fondness for Vista because, you guess it, John Wayne once owned a home here. He loved to work. Joe had a tremendous work ethic, such that he never really was comfortable unless he was doing something productive. He had a long and varied career in the physically demanding fields of construction, truck driving, and the pipe trades. 
and he willingly took jobs to support his family. For instance, around the time I was conceived, it's around 1980, he was working as a welder at the Santa Ana Free Nuclear Power Plant, where he was one of the few to volunteer for jobs deep inside the reactor, and most others were too claustrophobic. Well, fortunately, I turned out all right. I, th I think, I think. My, my wife can probably tell you. <laughs> Worry about that. Um, and later on, as work became scarcer, he, his jobs took him farther from home to places like El Centro, where he would spend the whole work, work week on site, sleeping in his car to save money. And as work slowed further, so this is around 1987, and his buddies sat idle in the union hall waiting for big jobs to land, it was he who pounded the pavement and learned of some welder openings at a little place called Disneyland. And his buddies laughed at him for considering work at an amusement park of all places. Well, it turned out Disneyland was a pretty good place, pretty good outfit to work for. My dad always said it was the best career decision he ever made. And within a few years, a lot of those same buddies had joined him at the happiest place on earth. He loved to create. You know the saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure? Well, that's, that was Joe's artistic style, as, as Pastor Ramon was just saying. He loved to make something out of nothing. While at Disneyland, there were a few times when he'd give us a backstage tour. And the place that was always the most excited, that, the, the place that he was always the most excited to show us was the dumpster. Where he'd tell us about all the great things he scored there, like you know, perfectly good plants. Disneyland was always changing its landscaping, so he would get all these, you know, basically brand new plants that he used to landscape our yard. And he'd get broken lanterns from like Big Thunder Mountain that he'd bring home and restore. And he'd take bits of scrap metal from the machine shop and weld them into sculptures of Mickey Mouse and Homer Simpson. There's there's one out there in the front that he did of Homer Simpson. And later on, after he retired, uh, he and Sandra moved to North Dakota, back to her hometown of Minot, where they would travel the countryside to antique shops and abandoned homesteads. And there he would find things like old crates, and he, and he repurposed them into potato keepers, and window frames that he'd use as canvases for his oil paintings. There's another one out, out there that he did. And so later on, when they moved back to Vista, he took tree, tree trimmings from my yard, because I have a bunch of eucalyptus trees, and he'd look up and say, you know, those are really nice straight branches. And, you know, I get them capped off and they have all these branches. And you know what? I can turn this into something. And he fashioned them into, you know, what you see here, these walking sticks, these walking stick works of art. And there was there that he, you know, would carve homages to his Old West heroes, to Disney characters, Santa Claus, and yes, even Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> he loved to give. He was incredibly generous with his time and resources. Much like his mother, Granny Annie, he was quick to help family and friends in need. He loved to give and he hated, I mean hated to sell. So uncomfortable was he in taking money that he's the only person I've known to engage in what I like to call reverse haggling, where he'd insist on selling something for less than what the buyer was originally asking. And that is if he, you know, would even sell it. You just want to give it away. And he loved to present as gifts his walking sticks and other art creations. And in fact, many times that was the driving motivation for him to create new pieces. He nearly always refused any payment despite the insistence of many. He loved to speak his opinion. So apparently his family had a nickname for him, the preacher. <laughs> 
and he was never shy to tell you how he felt about something or explain things as he saw them. He was fond of repeating sayings that reflected his life experience. One he often used to impart the value of education was, I never went to college, I went to the school of hard knocks. And as a kid, I used to think, you know, I'm like this eight, nine-year-old kid, what is this school of hard knocks? Is it, is it, is it related to Fort Knox? This, is it some kind of gold mining school? That sounds cool, I wanna go there. And another was, I can't always tell you what to do, but I can tell you what not to do. And as much as I rolled my eyes as a kid when he repeated these and other sayings ad nauseum, as an adult, I see them now for the wise words of counsel that they were. He loved his family. He loved his wife and life partner of 45 years, together through thick and thin. He loved her brother, Sheldon, and his family. He loved his two sons, one who left this world much too soon and is with him now in heaven. He loved his daughter-in-law, Tammy, and her family. He loved his grandson, Isaac, and granddaughter, Emmy, whom he, whom he never thought that he'd live long enough to see. He loved his mother and his brothers and his sisters, all now reunited in, again in heaven, and, and all his nieces and nephews, too. He loved the Lord, and he loved to be in fellowship with his church family, especially when food was involved. Joe came to his faith later in life, largely under the influence of my mother. And he didn't exactly wear his spirituality on his sleeve, but he had a deep and abiding faith in the Lord, a faith that shaped his actions as a husband and father, gave him strength in times of weakness, courage in times of fear, solace in times of sorrow. And he took comfort in the knowledge that despite his rough and tumble beginnings, despite the hard knocks he, he had endured, all that was no match for God's eternal love and the good news of our salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Joe's declining health over the last couple of years prevented him from enjoying many of these things he loved. But it did, but it did not deter his spirit. Until the end, he remained the dreamer and the lover of life. It is a comfort to us to know that he has been released from the pain and suffering brought on by disease. That he's been freed from the physical limitations of his earthly body so that his spirit may take new form in paradise, where he can be re reunited with loved ones and together rejoice in the Lord. I miss you, Dad. I love you, Dad. You always be in my heart. I gotta tell you that he took all my family to Disneyland. You remember that, Sandy? He took us all to all my family into Disneyland. He didn't give us that tour, though. <laughs> Um, one time he came to church with two walking sticks and one of them had a beautiful lion beautiful lion just just perfect he goes this is for your son it's like okay pretty cool and then he goes but this is for you 
Indian with my face. <laughs> like, man. I'm like, no. Joe, I kind of complain a little bit. But then I went to the mirror and I compare it. I'm like, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> the big chief. Pretty cool. What a great man. Anyone else that wants to take the microphone for a few minutes? Yeah, I get nervous too, talking in front of people. Let us confess our faith as we wait for that resurrection, the one that died for us and resurrected. Let us all say together, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's, God's only Son, our, our Lord, who, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Here at uh, First Lutheran, we share communion, especially in times like this. So it reminds us of the love of God that was poured through the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of COVID, we're not breaking bread and sharing it from regular feet of bread, but we have this little individual communion sets that um, it has two layers of a cover. The first one lets you get the bread out of it, and then it, the wine is, is sealed, and it's grape juice. And then the second one will allow you to drink the wine. So we will share this today um, as you are able to or would like to. I just want to say that everyone at this church, everyone is welcome to the table. Doesn't matter what church you come from, what faith you come from, you're welcome to the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If for some reason you can't have regular bread and you need to have gluten-free, um, just let me know as you come down for uh, communion. I can grab gluten-free for you. Now, because of our friends are all over the world, um, we have not thought this yet through how we're going to do this. I think we're going to drop it so it's not on the way. But we're going to make one line, and then you're going to come through this way. I'm going to stand here. So everyone comes around this way to go back to your city. I think that's the easiest way that we can go around this uh, Facebook camera here. So um, please stand as you're able as we bless our communion this morning, this morning, this afternoon. The Bible says that in the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come to the table and be filled with the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Let us make one line to come down as you are able. 
if you, if you would like to stay seated and would like to have communion, let me know at the end of everyone coming through, and I will bring communion to you. Please come. This is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. This is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. You call me out upon the water. your table more than we could ever ask as you have nourished us in this meal now strengthen us to love the world with your own life in your name we pray Amen. Amen. we're going to sing uh, this song that you may reference Joey it's amazing grace but it's uh, a new version of it that I hope you enjoy as well let us sing together.
Giving God in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as wit witness to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we prepare for the final blessing and we sing together, Great is thy faithfulness.
mentioned at the beginning that we will have refreshment time, uh, fellowship time right here outside in the fellowship room. If you want to come in and grab the refreshments and come outside, there is tables outside if you feel more comfortable being outside. Um, the weather is just so beautiful uh, today to enjoy it. Let us commend Joe to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Joe. Acknowledge, we humble, humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Joe into the arms of your mercy into the blessing rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name, in the of, name Christ. of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.